Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name's Artemeo. I'm a Biology 112 student, and I'm gonna be talking about coral. And this is something I'm super passionate about. So, specifically, the species we're gonna be talking about is Acropora cervincornis, commonly known as the staghorn coral. This species is one of the most important in the reef ecosystem. Right here, I have a picture of it. This is a very mature colony. You can see all the fish swimming around. So, staghorn coral can be found all over the world, including South Africa, the Red Sea, and of course, the Great Barrier Reef. They are the foundation of the reef because of their fast-growing abilities. They build structures for all the life forms. These corals utilize calcium and carbon dioxide from the water to build calcium carbonate skeletons. And the polyps of these corals are small, very small, and they're nested inside of the skeleton and connected by a thin layer of flesh. This unique adaptation allows for sexual reproduction uh, through the use of fragmentation, where a small branch of the colony may fall off. So like one of these guys right here it might fall off and go into the sand and they grow a new colony all by themselves. So right here we can see the flesh, a little flesh bridge, and then a unique polyp by itself. Um, it's kind of nested inside. I want to draw your attention to the basal plate. This is where the coral is going to push out calcium and continue to build the body. So, staghorn corals are both predators and prey. The staghorn coral is heterotrophic, but they cannot fulfill all of their energy needs by simply catching food out of the water. And this goes for most, most all coral. They have a symbiotic relationship with microorganisms named zooanthellae. And by providing a place for the zooanthellae to live, the zooanthellae in turn provides sugar by using sunlight. The zooanthellae are autotrophic and they are able to produce sugars just like plants can. And they provide the coral with the sugar and the coral in turn provides structure, safety, it's a mutualistic relationship. Um, the corals are able to catch some food out of the water. It's supplementary. And through these two methods, this is how corals obtain a majority of their energy. And staghorn corals are also prey to many different kinds of fish and microorganisms, actually. They, they'll feed parasitically. But today we're going to look at the parrotfish. And one parrotfish is actually estimated to produce a thousand pounds of sand via eating the coral, crushing it up, and then, of course, releasing it as sand. A thousand pounds of sand in one year, which I think is amazing. And while parrotfish do prey on coral, it should be understood that they also eat pest algae and cut down certain parts of the coral, and they're returning this to the reef ecosystem. So it's not completely bad, like we shouldn't want to eliminate parrotfish. It's, it's all part of the ecosystem. It's very comprehensive. So as far as corals in our world go, on the tree of life, staghorn corals are nadarians, one of the first animal species to evolve. And they can be thought of as a more developed or evolved version of the sponge. They are predecessors for hydra, commonly recognized as the jellyfish or anemone. If we go back up to the diagram of the polyp, you can kind of see the similarities it has with an anemone, such as, you know, you got the tentacles, little mouth right here. I, I see it. And as far as the ocean ecosystem, corals are really the foundation because they're the primary producers just as plants are to us. They, the Great Barrier Reef alone is home to 25% of all marine life. And corals are currently endangered they're, they're under threat due to the rising temperatures and acidification of the ocean. Acidification really involves, right back at the start where I said they utilize a calcium and carbon dioxide to build their skeleton. If the ocean becomes too acidic, the calcium becomes bound to a different compound and becomes unusable for the coral, leading to the actual calcium skeleton of the coral becoming thinner, weaker, they can't grow as large. And it's really a it's really sad, it's a huge problem. And it doesn't only affect corals, it affects uh mollusks, 
any kind of shelled crustacean. They just can't grow as strong. But um, looking to the lighter side, corals are also a source of revenue for developing countries. They're farmed in the ocean. It's known as aquaculture. And the cor corals provide valuable employment to the inhabitants of places such as Indonesia and the islands of Oceania. These corals are harvested and sold to collectors who are going to display them in marine fish tanks. And it really should be noted that this is not harmful to the environment because the farmers, they are not going out and collecting the corals. They only do it once, but then they bring it back and they grow more. And, you know, that's great for the ecosystem. So, yeah, I mean, I could talk all day about this stuff, but I think my time's up. Here's my work. I used uh, these websites for the pictures, some of this for the information. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope, I hope you learned something.